Hello. Uh, today we're going to talk about probability generating functions for discrete random variables. So that's the uh, topic of tonight's video. These play a role much like moment generating functions. Uh, but for discrete random variables, just to sort of give a quick overview, Move the uh, page a bit here. Go back to my pen. So, again, probability generating functions these are play the same role for discrete random variables. as moment generating functions do in some sense for continuous random variables. But unfortunately, the, while they're sort of in a general sense in the same spirit, they're a little trickier to work with. So I think that it would be helpful to, to have a video about this. For So if I have a discrete random variable, capital K, we say the moment generating function, or the dis probability generating function, G sub capital K, of z is the expected value of z to the kth power. I've written that in uppercase because it's the, for the random variable. So if I spell that out, that's the sum over all the possible outcomes. The sum as k goes from minus infinity to plus infinity of z to the little k times the probability that the random variable capital K equals that outcome. So, and in fact, this is, is similar to the, the moment generating function in the sense that the moment generating function is the Laplace transform of the probability density function, while this is like the Z transform of the probability mass function. So again, they're, they're sort of the way Laplace and Z transforms are play similar roles in continuous time and discrete time. These play similar roles for continuous and discrete random variables. One of the important properties of the same way we use these once we've defined them is to take uh, derivatives. So for example, if I took the derivative with respect to z, I would get the sum as k goes from minus infinity to plus infinity of k times z to the k minus 1 times the probability that capital K equals little k. We might in the future write this using the notation for the PMF of f sub k of k. So if I look at this thing here, this is in fact, just from definition, this is uh, the expected value of k times z to the k minus 1. Right, that's the function. That's this function here. I uh, change color to indicate it. So this thing here is the function that's being weighted by the probability here. So it gives me something like this. If I slide down the page a little to make room, if I now evaluate this at z equals one, so that's another change from moment generating functions. We evaluate those at s equals zero. We evaluate this at s equals 1, if I take this derivative and I evaluate it at z equals 1, well then I just get the expected value of k. Right? Because this z to the k minus 1 is just 1. So for the first derivative, things are very much the same as I would have in, in a uh, moment generating function, that the first derivative of the probability generating function does in fact give me the mean of the distribution when I evaluate it for the right value of that independent variable z. Start on a, on a new page though, things get more complicated with the second derivative. I take the second derivative with respect to z, then what I end up with is that same sum, as k goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, of k times k minus 1 times z 
the k minus 2 times the PMF, which is f of k as we're now writing it. And this is again going to be the expected value of this whole thing. So this is the expected value of the random variable k times k minus 1 times the independent variable z to the k minus 2 power. So if I evaluate this second derivative at z equals 1, then I end up with this z term dropping out again, and this is where things get a little more complicated than they were in the continuous case. That I have the expected value of k times k minus 1, which I can also say this is now, if I multiply things out and use the linearity property of the expectation, this is the expected value of k squared minus the expected value of k. So it's not just the second moment, right? At the moment generating function, it was very easy, and I just got the second moment from the second derivative. Here I get the second moment, but I have this extra factor. So if I want, we can solve from the second derivative, given that I already have the first derivative, and I can get the second moment. So I can solve for the second moment by saying the expected value of capital K squared is equal to the second derivative evaluated at z equals 1 plus the mean that I already have. Right? So that's just solving the equation on the line above, moving this term here to the other side, which is in fact itself the first derivative. So if I want to take it one step further, I can write that out. Say So this is also, I could also say, oops, back on the right view, back to my pen. So I can say this is also the second derivative evaluated at z equals 1 plus the first derivative evaluated at z equals 1. And the higher moments go with the same thing, that we continue to have these extra terms here. So while I can find all the moments in terms of the derivatives, they're not equal to the derivatives as they were with the moment generating function. So that's the, uh, the basic idea of the moment generating function. The next video I'm going to go on, I'll break it here, and in the next video I'll go on and show an example of using this to find the, moment gen or the probability generating function for a particular distribution and how to use that.